now that we know the results from uh, convex analysis, we can now define and prove this uh, celebrated result of single object allocation called the Meyerson's lemma. So for that we are going to define something called monotonicity of an allocation rule. So we are going to say an allocation rule to be non-decreasing if the following thing happens. If for every agent i and for every t minus i, so the type uh, profile of the other agents, we have the following uh, condition satisfied that whenever uh, t i is strictly greater than s i, uh, the, the corresponding allocation is going to be non-decreasing. So it is saying that if an agent has had a type of SI and if it increases its type to be uh, to TI, uh, if uh, the, the probability with which it was getting that object, that probability can just weakly increase. So that is the meaning of a non-decreasing allocation rule. So all the allocation rule that satisfies this property is called a non-decreasing or monotone allocation rule. So now let us come to the, the result by Meyerson which actually gives a characterization of all the dominant strategy incentive compatible mechanisms in the context of uh, allocating one single indivisible object. So let us assume that uh, the type set of all the agents are between 0 and bi. So it's an interval between 0 and bi. Bi can, can differ but everyone's lowest uh, value for that object is 0. And uh, the valuations are in the product form. This means that uh, if you have a probability of allocation as PI and your value, uh, the value for that object is TI, then your expected valuations or the valuation for, uh, for your object under that uh, rule is nothing but PI times TI. The allocation rule uh, F, which is mapping this type profile into an allocation, uh, which, is a, which is a randomized allocation, um, and a payment rule which has this uh, uh, components P1 to Pn for each of these agents uh, is going to be DSIC if and only if two conditions hold. And what are those conditions? The first condition is F is non-decreasing, the property that we have already defined in the beginning that if your uh, valuation increases then your uh, probability of getting that object weakly increases. And the second uh, property is that the payments are going to be given by a very um, a specific integral formula. Let us read it one by one. So the first part you can uh, denote that. So the, this is the payment for agent i when uh, the type profile is ti t minus i. And it has one component which is a constant component from the view of player i. It may depend on t minus i but because in this context uh, from the view of player i um, uh, they are, uh, it's uh, the uh, types of the other agents is held fixed. So it is like a constant for that player. So we'll uh, typically refer to this, uh, this uh, component as a, uh, as a constant component of the payment function. So the second part is uh, its, uh, its value. So something like TI times the probability with which it gets this. Uh, so this is something that uh, in the product form, this is the value of that agent for this object but then the there is this uh, negative integral form which is integrating between 0 and ti the integral um, the the probability of allocation of that agent so we will see uh, what are the implications of this integral formula uh, when we discuss examples and uh, uh, the, the we prove this result but at this point it is just this integral formula so the first remark that we are going to make is that uh, this is uh, uh, a little different. So we have seen the characterization of truthful mechanisms uh, even for Roberts theorem for the, uh, the affine maximizer results by Roberts. Uh, but that gives a very specific functional form. While Meyerson's result is giving a more implicit property. It is saying that if, if um, a mechanism is truthful, then um, uh, some monotonicity condition should hold. So something like it is, um, if uh, it has a very specific property here, then it should continue to hold that property in some other place and so on. So let us now start uh, proving this result. First, we'll prove the forward direction. That is, uh, we are given that this uh, uh, mechanism, F comma P is DSIC, then we'll have to show that these two properties should hold. So uh, how should we go about proving it? So first we write down the utility of agent i. 
So utility when its uh, type is ti and the type of the other players is t minus i. Uh, we know that that is going to be ti fi ti t minus i. So this is the valuation that this agent gets minus the payment uh, that it is making under that uh, uh, under that type profile. And when you have uh, a different type for that the same agent, and uh, this should change uh, accordingly. Now, uh, since uh, this f comma p is DSIC, will uh, will have certain properties satisfied. It is going to be uh, at least so uh, we can write this utility, which is nothing but this one. Uh, when this agent is misreporting its type uh, to SI, uh, this uh, inequality should should get satisfied. Now, uh, we can actually add and subtract one quantity, which is this SI. If I si t minus i, so this we will add as well as subtract, and uh, we rearrange these terms in a in a certain way such that we we have one quantity which is here, the other quantity is if I si t minus i uh, multiplied with t i minus s i. So you can see that this uh, this terms will actually cancel out this and this, uh, but we want to write it in a in this specific form because now we know. That if we collect together these two terms, this is nothing but the utility of, uh, of the same agent when its true type is SI. So this is what we have defined earlier. So this is from the second equation here. And the second term is just going to be the difference between these two types, a, a TI minus SI, multiplied by the uh, FI of SI T minus I. Now if we uh, go back to what we have defined in the context of uh, convex functions and subgradients, we can actually uh, define this GTI function to be the utility function. So uh, everywhere just uh, ignore the T minus I, T minus I is appearing everywhere, it is like uh, the other agents uh, types which is held fixed. So we look at uh, the, the utility of TI, T minus I, utility of player I when uh, its type is TI and define that as, the, uh, as that function GTI. And phi ti, we are we are using the same notation because we, we want to uh, show that this g t g function will be a convex function, and phi will, will be nothing but a, a subgradient of uh, so f of ti is nothing but this uh, uh, the allocation the the probability of uh, getting that object for player i. Now this uh, uh, using this uh, substitution, uh, we can write this equation one exactly in the same way. Uh, as we have wanted uh, for for the subgradient equation. So this is nothing but the subgradient equation. So all that we are left with is to show that this function g is a uh, convex function. If we can show that, then we, we know that this phi function is nothing but a subgradient function. All right, so we will make this conclusion after we have proved uh, that g is a convex function. Uh, rest of the things are uh, are falling in place. So let us now try to see uh, why G is convex. Okay, so to, to do that, let's do the following thing. Let us pick two arbitrary points Xi and Zi in the type set of player I and uh, define a convex combination of that and denote that with Yi. So we have a convex combination of these two points Xi and Zi and that is defined as uh, Yi. Now what we know from DSIC because uh, we got this uh, inequality of 1, so the uh, this first uh, uh, equation and its uh, re reduced form when we are uh, substituting using g and phi, uh, this is coming as a consequence of the uh, DSIC. We have just rearranged the expression, uh, the, the, the condition for DSIC. So therefore we can uh, just write that if this agent's uh, true type was xi and if, if it was misreporting to yi then we, we can use this inequality to show that uh, this is dsic. So that is for between xi and uh, yi and when uh, its true type is zi and it is misreporting to yi you can write a very similar expression. So now what we are going to do is we are going to multiply this first uh, inequality with lambda and the second inequality with 1 minus lambda and then add them add them together this does not change the uh, the inequality this, uh, the direction of the inequality because both lambda and 1 minus lambda are non negative quantities 
So if, on the left hand side we have uh, this quantity and on the right hand side we have uh, g of yi which is nothing but this lambda of xi uh, plus 1 minus lambda of zi that's the expansion of yi and uh, the, the rest of the uh, part the rest of this uh, right hand side of this inequality uh, uh, happens to be phi of yi times this quantity now we know that y is nothing but this the, this quantity itself so this part will be equal to zero so all that we are left with so this uh, disappears and what we are left with is this so this shows this is exactly the condition for convexity and since we have picked arbitrary xi and zi uh, and their convex their arbitrary convex combination uh, we can say that g is convex so we have actually proved that uh, this function is convex so what was g g was nothing but the utility function this is something that we have noticed in the very first example of uh, the second price option the, that the utility was uh, convex and its derivative or subgradient in this case uh, happened to be the allocation function and that is not just a con um, uh, coincidence this is this can be seen for any kind of mechanism any kind of truthful mechanism which uh, allocates one single indivisible object okay so um, yeah so now we are going to use the fact that uh, what whatever we know for, uh, as the properties of this convex uh, convex function and its uh, subgradient uh, we can apply lemma 3 lemma 3 uh, uh, said that uh, when you have a subgradient of a uh, convex function then that subgradient is going to be non decreasing so therefore what we have is this function fi uh, ti t minus i is non decreasing in ti and that is what we wanted to prove this is the part 1 of our Meyerson's result and this uh, lemma 4 uh, gave some integral formula and that integral formula is this and we are going to use that to find the payment uh, expression so what can we do what uh, we can just uh, replace this num uh, this uh, quantities with their uh, exact values the actual values so we have this utility of 0 uh, t minus i and this uh, fi so the subgradient is the uh, the allocation of uh, allocation function um, under this uh, of, of agent i and then uh, we expand it uh, out further because this utility is nothing but the uh, their expected uh, valuation expected value for that object and minus the payment that has been made and now uh, we have because this is uh, zero uh, the uh, uh, this part only remains to be minus of uh, uh, pi zero because the only the payment part uh, shows up uh, the the first part because ti is actually equal to zero that part disappears so that is uh, that is just this and for the last part we have uh, the same same expression as before now you just rearrange and you get the uh, the payment formula that we have uh, pro uh, that we wanted to prove. so this proves the first part the forward direction that whenever we have a um, um, uh, dsic mechanism that should satisfy these two properties now we'll have to show the reverse direction that if that satisfies this monotonicity property and uh, this uh, payment formula then it must be a dsic and this proof is uh, very easy to follow and I like this proof because it is entirely by pictures. So what is given in this case? We are given that this function is non-decreasing and we have that payment formula. Now, uh, now let us look at the payment formula and we know exactly what it is. And uh, uh, for, for simplicity of exposition, let's assume that pi0 is exactly equal to 0. All that will change is the origin point here will change if, it, if we uh, use a non-zero uh, uh, constant value for pi 0 comma t minus i but that does not matter. So let us assume this so then uh, we don't have so this term becomes equal to zero all that we have is ti uh, multiplied by the probability of allocation for that agent and this integral formula and what we also know that this fi function is non-decreasing. So let us look at this fi function. So let us look at the, the function fi uh, ti t minus i and on the x-axis we are plotting ti. So this function is uh, non-decreasing looks something like this. Now when the agent is not uh, misreporting its type, so it is reporting its true type. So let's say ti is its true type. 
if it if it reports that then what is the uh, the payment that it is making so the first term of this uh, payment formula is ti times fti so which is nothing but the the area under this uh, uh, this entire rectangle here and then you are uh, subtracting out the part uh, which is uh, the uh, the integral integral formula uh, the integral from 0 to ti of that uh, allocation so we are actually uh, integrating out this green part from it so therefore the payment is nothing but this yellow section here because we have this rectangle subtracting out this uh, area under this curve is essentially the uh, yellow one but we also know that the utility is nothing but uh, the utility is uh, ti fi ti t minus i minus this payment pi of ti t minus i and if you do that uh, what you get is uh, this part will actually cancel out and you will be uh, left with this part so this green part is nothing but this green part is nothing but the utility here for this player when it is reporting its type truthfully now let us look at two um, uh, situations where in one case the agent is uh, over uh, uh, overstating its type and uh, the second case where it is understating it so if it is overstating so si so what changes is is its uh, payment right so it changes its allocation and its payment of course now the the mechanism will uh, imagine as if this is the this is the total allocation and um, therefore uh, what will change here is this term so because payment can only be computed based on what is reported so both this ti and uh, ti uh, here they will be replaced by si now so uh, this first term will be nothing but this larger rectangle here now and the second part will again go from 0 to SI, so which means this will be uh, this area under this curve, this entire area under this curve. And uh, the, the payment will be nothing but this part here. Right? So this is the payment that it, it is making. But now if you are looking at the actual utility, so the actual utility for this player will have this TI in it. The only thing that changed is this SI because player I has misreported SI. So its own type does not change. So this this part will not change. So it will still have this ti multiplied by by this fi, which will be having this large value here. So uh, the the actual valuation of this agent will have this value. And now it is making the payment uh, of this amount. So notice that this will go all the way up to here because the uh, for the payment. Part, it has no way to uh, estimate um, what its true type is so it will just uh, uh, calculate everything uh, by replacing ti with si and that will give give it a payment of this part right so you can see that your its valuation was this much and it is subtracting out uh, this larger quantity so uh, compared to the earlier one uh, it is having this part of course but it is also getting this negative part. So uh, eventually this area under this curve minus the area that we have shown here, this is going to be its utility. So clearly that will be uh, worse than this one because now uh, you have the uh, have this um, uh, area under this curve, this area here, but you are subtracting out some part. Fair enough. So that is, uh, that is one, uh, the, the part where it is misreporting uh, its type to be higher than its true type. Let us look at the condition where it is uh, reporting uh, misreporting to something which is smaller. So as before, you are you are going to have this uh, the, the the mechanism will calculate its uh, payments uh, as as this part only, and uh, whatever uh, the, your actual utility what uh, uh, what it is is uh, again going to be replaced only in the allocation part uh, not on this on this ti part because that is the ti that you already have so um, this ti times this this part so uh, so this is going to be the new allocation here so this smaller rectangle is going to be uh, the, 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 the valuation part for this agent minus the, the payment that it is making so this part is going out so it is only getting 
this uh, this remaining portion so a, a kind of a uh, the the top part of this uh, uh, of this area under this curve it has been chopped off the rest of the thing it is getting at as its utility but that is certainly smaller than uh, smaller than the original one this uh, area here because you are actually losing this part so uh, this also shows that if you are misreporting uh, uh, your type to be something smaller then that is also going to be not beneficial for you so we could uh, we could show in using this uh, this case this uh, payment formula and the uh, fact that this is monotone uh, that it is essentially truthful it is uh, dominant strategy incentive compatible one can show this even more formally but the proof uh, pic proof by pictures is much more uh, intuitive and uh, uh, perhaps will stay longer in your mind so one corollary that we can make is that an allocation rule in single object allocation setting is implementable in dominant strategies if it is non decreasing so we already know what kind of payment formula we have uh, all that we need is to ensure that the allocation rule is monotone and that's it so with that we can ensure that that allocation rule is uh, dominant strategy implemented